It's time to babble the fuck on. Live from the John Lovitz Podcast Theater, it's Hollywood Babylon. With your hosts, Kevin Smith and Ralph Garman. Hey, everybody. How nice. It is Saturday night in Hollywood, so let's babble the fuck on. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Ralph Garman. Wow. Fuck, man. Right across the face, neck, and chest, dude. That was a lot of love from the room. Couldn't even get my name out. I was like, I'm good. And they're like, wow. Premature applausation. <laughs> I'll take it, I don't care. Like a girls episode on HBO. Do you watch that? I, I don't, because I've never seen a more unlikable group of people on television. More so than the Sex and the City women? I oh, know yeah. you didn't like them. Sex and the City women, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't love them. Hold on one second. Hey man, where's the other show? <laughs> you want another show up there? Yeah, uh, P.S., shut the fuck up. <laughs> take it away, sir. Um, I didn't love the Sex and the City girls. Yeah. But at least I wanted to fuck them. <laughs> For the most part. Okay. Um, but you're always attacking the one, man. Well, the one who looks like a horse? <laughs> <laughs> Wearing my Manolo Blancs. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if you turn her over. The Manolo Blahniks? No, the... <laughs> Secretariat Jessica Parker. <laughs> Move the fuck on. What's your point? My point was, this past week on Girls, it was a big story. It was a big hubbub. It was a big hullabaloo. About uh, one, uh, one scene in uh, the, the TV show where uh, Sherry Appleby... Remember her from Roswell? Remember that show? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> she played the girlfriend of some unlikable guy on the show, as if there's any other kind on Girls. And um, he, he was uh, having sex with her, and he pulled out and shot uh, his load all over her chest. And so they cut to a shot of her laying back there with his uh, essence all over her chest. Fuck it, pearl necklace? Yeah. Is, is that a first for television? I believe so. I and envy it, this generation. Yeah. I, when I was a young lad, yeah. fucking watching Bowling for Dollars, I dreamed about jizzing all <laughs> over the... Over the lane? Yeah, and the bowler's chest yeah. and shit like that. So there was a big deal. Uh, everybody was in, a, in an uproar about the fact that they showed that on television. I didn't hear that. Yeah. <laughs> I thought of all people, if there was jism involved, you would be interested. That's what I'm saying, man. Like, yeah. I've got my fucking ear to the fucking grindstone and other mixed metaphors <laughs> about when it comes to cum in the entertainment news, I know. And that didn't pop up on my cum door. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's what I'm here for, to fill you in on Thank you. ejaculate on television. <laughs> you fucking the cum I miss, you catch. That's right. And throw it back at me. Let me, can I tell you? How dare you, sir? <laughs> can I uh, share something real quick? Before I came in, I wish I brought the picture to give to James. Here at the Love It's, it's a bit of a thing. I can't just, here's a picture, like, and, and it goes up. You have to send it three days in advance in order for it to go up on the screen and shit. So before I came, I was coming up, I guess Orlando Megacon's going on right now uh -huh. in Florida. And uh, some dude was like, I saw the grossest thing in the world. Jay and Silent Bob making out. And he had a picture. They finally released that picture, did they? I guess. <laughs> there was a picture. No, it wasn't me. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Oh, sorry. There was a picture of, uh, of a blunt man in chronic at Orlando Megacon, like in full makeout mode. Thankfully, there's another picture. It was a boy and girl, boyfriend, girlfriend and shit. Oh. But I'll be honest with you, I, 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 for the moment that I saw it, Blood rushed a little bit. <laughs> Did you let Muse in on that, uh, yeah. that story? I'll let him know in the next show I'm on with him. They were boyfriend and girlfriend. Which one was the girl? The girl was chronic, so oh. it was even cooler for me, man. Yeah. Because that's the J person yeah. in the relationship. I was going to say, I, I wouldn't envy that guy if the girl was blunt man. Yeah. <laughs> with a beard and everything, you know? If you, you want to know what it's like to fuck a chick with a beard, just right here, buddy. <laughs> All right, that's... <laughs> 
Moving on. Stick it between these and fucking face, neck, and chest. And we're back to that girls episode all over again. You know what that shit's going to be called? Fucking boys. Because <laughs> my boys going to be swimming fucking all over your face, neck, and chest. I'm sorry. I... You brought up the comment. I know. I'm sorry I pursued this line of questioning, Your Honor. I'd like to take a recess, if you don't mind. Uh, let's start the show off as we do each and every week, where we like to single out some folks who have come particularly long distances or are celebrating special occasions. It's a segment we call the Shout Outs. It's a shout out. Kevin and Brown, so get your cock out. Yeah. Get your cock out. It's a bad omen. You've dropped your cock. <laughs> it's just so I've long never I seen you drop the cock before. It was so long I was stepping on it. We have new chords this week. Did you know I this? know. That's fucking yeah. awesome. That's why last people week, can hear us. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, last week was a bit of a, a hectic episode. But listen to this. This is fantastic. All right. Uh, th- again, we get a ton of these. And if you sent one in and we can't, don't get a chance to read it, we apologize. But... Uh, <laughs> Someone's Shout cheering. outs for the fuckers who aren't picked. Woo! Someone apparently glad we're not reading theirs, I think. <laughs> I would embarrass myself. Uh, how about Will Wilkins? Is Will, where's Will? I saw him earlier. Where is he? Will, where are you? Hey, boss. How you doing, sir? Um, a shout out to Will. Here's what he wrote. I've gone to great lengths to attend this week's Hollywood Babylon all the way from San Francisco. I'm sure by now I'm worn down by the inconceivable distance of 326 miles. <laughs> However, it's worth the pain to see you and Kevin live. I'm not just a fan, I'm your audio whipping boy every Sunday. Yes, Will is the sound engineer who posts Hollywood Babylon on the internet each and every week. He is the conduit. It happens here for everyone in the room, but if you hear it at home, man, Will is your pusher. Yes. Uh, Will says, my birthday's this Wednesday, the 20th. So I would, happy, I would be happy if Christian Bale would tell me that I'm a nice guy, but seriously, you and me, man, we're fucking done professionally. <laughs> All my best and keep up the great work. Little, uh, little, uh, little Christian Bale, is that what you're looking for? Oh, good for you! Oh, la di da di da oh, I put things on the internet, now talk like Christian Bale! No! 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 Look, you're a nice guy, Will, right? You're a nice guy. But you and me are fucking done professionally, mate. There you go, Will. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for all your hard work, sir. He has saved my ass many, many times. Likewise. Been there many, many times. Uh, Renee and Stuart, are you guys here from Alberta, Canada? <laughs> Diplomatic immunity. A. <laughs> Speaking of Canada, I should have brought the video clip, but, but I just saw it, finally got around to see it today. You on Epic Mealtime, mm. eating that, that mountain of fucking food. Yeah, yeah, the burly beaver sandwich. That was a hell of a sandwich you were working on it there. It was. That, I had so much fun doing it. Those dudes are really, really fucking yeah, fun and guys. funny. But that sandwich, like I was watching it being made, and I was like, oh, man, I'm, I'm going to have to fake this. I took one bite. It was fucking religious. It, it, like, who knew you put hot dogs next to a fucking uh, bear claw with some pastrami and some fucking cheese? And French fries. French fries and gravy and sugar on top. So it was like eating four courses at once. It was pretty damn good. My favorite part of that whole thing is I'm eating it and I fall asleep on it. Yeah. Because it's very large. It's like it's pillow size. <laughs> yes. And you know Megan, Megan who runs my life, at the right. end of the show, Megan was like, can I have that? And she took it home and they ate it for a week. <laughs> it's like fucking Homer Simpson with that sandwich and shit. <laughs> Just cutting off slices. It's like Thanksgiving. You ate all the leftovers. Uh, Ray and Stewart are from Alberta, Canada. They're here to celebrate... Um, somebody's birthday. Whose fucking birthday is it? Stuart? Stuart's birthday. <laughs> Huge fan. Listen since day one. It's now a tradition for us to listen to your show. We're on road trips. Um, when he told me we were coming to LA, I, uh, Renee got him these tickets as a birthday present. He, she was hoping that Charlton Heston could wish Stuart a happy birthday. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Renee and Stuart from <laughs> Canada, <laughs> or as we call it, the Forbidden Zone. <laughs> Dr. Zayas told me not to go there. 
You won't like it, Taylor. <laughs> but I did. And I found a baby that said, Mama. <laughs> it's a madhouse. Get your goddamn stinking paws off me, you damn stinking Canuck. <laughs> ah. There you go. Happy birthday, Stuart. Happy birthday. I just watched Planet of the Apes again, so it's very fresh in my mind. I was going to say, man, the fact that you, lot of pulled, details. you pulled the baby, and I was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and for a second, I went away from the show. I was like, that was pretty scary. Wasn't <laughs> yeah, wasn't it? Remember it? <laughs> oh, they God. found that doll, and that, that terrified shit me. just As went crazy. That was the moment that I would watch that on the 430 movie, and I would cover my eyes, and you'd still hear the fucking sound. So in my head, the doll was even worse than it was in the movie. <laughs> Growing up, man, I always had this vision in my head of this hell doll and shit. And then years later, when I was an adult, I actually watched it. Yeah. It's pretty tame. Yeah, it's just a fucking doll. <laughs> yeah. Nothing scary about it, really. Uh, Francie and, and Javier. Francie and Javier. Hey, guys. How are you? They're here celebrating their engagement. Oh, nice. Love is in the air. Na, 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 na. Love is in the air. Because they're on the second floor. Oh, I got you. Would you be singing Love is on the Ground if they were in the first floor? <laughs> yeah, man. Love is on my neck. Stop it. <laughs> my face, neck, and chest. Stop. Uh, they made the long trek from San Jose to see us live. Oh, shit. Do you know the way to San Jose? No, I'm sorry. Stop shit, it. Stop it. You know what? When you get a chance, file my cock in your mouth. <laughs> Captain's just turn on the buckle your seatbelt sign. I'm not fucking We're around. It's been a, a rough day. Yeah, wow. Um, Javier was talking about how much he loves Francie. She is uh, the, the best girl ever. In fact, she even indulges his nerdiness. She'll encourage the use of some pretty nerdy props during our engagement photos, he wrote. Here's the, here was one of their engagement photos. Let's throw it up there. <laughs> Javier's got Thor's hammer and she's got Hulk hands on. That's adorable. That's pretty cute. We're taking the matrimonial plunge next month. I shit you not, we tried to, to figure out the Saturday that made the most sense for our wedding. We ended up picking April 20th as our wedding date. That's right. We're getting married on 420. Could Kevin, using his kick-ass Bane voice, give us the advice on how to get the most out of a wedding ceremony that falls on 420? This is all of your expertise in one wheelhouse, sir. It really is. It's like, Bane, it's pot, it's 420. This is everything I've trained for. <laughs> you're like Bruce Wayne coming out of the mountains after you got that fucking blue flower. You're, you're ready. You're ready to fight crime at this point. Francie and Javier. So good of you to join us. How to get the most out of a wedding on 420, Ralph Garman. Yes, Mr. Bane. I propose you introduce a bit of the sticky icky. <laughs> Put it in a face mask and... <sighs> Ooh. Ooh, what are these? Ooh. That was my blue velvet. <laughs> <laughs> nice segue. I segued. Uh, that's all I got, man. Uh, that's more than enough. <laughs> I was wondering what would break first, uh, your hymen or your back? <laughs> Happy wedding! Just throwing <laughs> shit out there now. Uh, okay, prepare yourselves. That's fucking awesome, man. When are you guys getting married? 420 for sure? How long you been dating? A year. A what the year? fuck are you thinking? <laughs> Do not get married. It's madness. No wonder they're getting married on 420. <laughs> they're to be fucking stoned. stoned. To go through with it. <laughs> One year, right on, man. One of you is very good at sex. <laughs> what does it say again? You've known oh, each other for known nine. Oh, they've known each other for nine, but you've only been engaged, involved with one another for one. One of you is very bad at closing <laughs> the deal. <laughs> Everybody's pointing at Javier. <laughs> what a patient man you are. <laughs> to the victor go the spoils, though. That's awesome, man. He waited for fucking nine years. And well, now eight. he'll have her forever. Yeah. <laughs> so for eight years, you were just hanging around Javier going, eh, no, no, no. Not interested. Don't want his penis. No, don't want it. Don't want it. 
Now I want his penis. <laughs> Just went on like a light switch, did it? <laughs> All right, congratulations, you two. It's uh, not going to end well. <laughs> no, it's going to last forever. Yeah, that's me. what I meant to say. It's yeah, going to last yeah, forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is, I'm good at telling these things. That's a meet cute story like you read about, man. Like, yeah. it took us eight years to fuck, and then we were like, fuck it, let's get married. <laughs> That's the American romance story Trust right there. Me. In a couple of years, he's going to be using the Thor hammer and she's going to be using the Hulk gloves. Trust me. <laughs> Lubing them up and she's... Ah! Hulk stretch. Whoa! Uh, Brian, Liz, Justin, Polo, Curran, Brittany, Rick, Heather, the Taylors, Andy, Katie, and Pickles. I'm sorry they couldn't be with us tonight. That's a shame. <laughs> Which one's Pickles? Oh, it's a dude. Oh. I guess that would make sense, wouldn't it? Pickles. He's like, look at these pickles, motherfucker. He's got more than one? Yeah. I can understand pickle, but if he's pickles, he's a medical oddity. He's got a fork and cock. <laughs> you like that one. That was funny. Mmm, <laughs> you speak with fork and cock. Uh, pickles. Pickles always reminds me of... Uh, Buddy Sorrell. Remember the old Dick Van Dyke show? No. Where he was, you don't remember the Dick Van Dyke show? One of the bit. greatest sitcoms ever. Now that you're mad at me, yes, I remember it. <laughs> <laughs> but they were comedy writers. Yes. And Buddy, uh, Maury Amsterdam played a character named Buddy, and his wife was named Pickles. The lady in the show was Pickles? No, no, it was his wife at home. You never saw her. She was just referred to like a, like a Vera or something Yeah, like it was that. like a punchline always. That's not what Pickles says. Pickles was always a punchline. <laughs> what, just because Pickles is a funny word? Yes. Why didn't they name her Zamboni? Uh, I don't know. Because it wasn't in Canada. It didn't take place in Canada. If they had it, it would have. Anyway, Brian says, uh, sorry for making you read so many names. As well you should be, Brian. <laughs> Except for Pickles. That was Yeah, fun. Pickles. <laughs> but for my 24th birthday, I could think of nothing better than to get all my friends together and make the journey down from Ventura, California. Yeah! All right, no need to cheer for Ventura. It's okay. <laughs> We've all been there and... Mm, a lot of meth. You got that going for you. I'm just saying, there's a lot of meth. <laughs> this dude is straight out of central casting, man. He's like, come on, Ralph. <laughs> you can do it, Ralph. We're huge fans, and it'd be awesome to have the gay ghost wish me a happy birthday. Hold right, on. Brian. No, where the fuck is, you can do it, Ralph. <laughs> you can do it, Ralph. <laughs> All right. Maybe not central casting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe one of the lesser casting agencies that doesn't get a lot of work. Piss poor casting, I believe it is. That's right. Bad timing casting. What? <laughs> Where? <laughs> Who? Happy birthday. <laughs> Boo. There you go. Uh, Nancy and Phil Lantis. Fucking lively crowd tonight, it's, man. It's nuts. It's nuts. It's like, it's like uh, Chippendales. <laughs> Everything's a bachelorette party. Everyone's coming with a groups of 12. You're going to be at a thong, and I'm going to be working my tits in 20 minutes. <laughs> Put the tassels on. Uh, Phil writes, my wife Nancy and I are attending the show celebrating our 25th anniversary. Oh! You see? You see? That's how it's done. Diplomatic longevity. <laughs> um, how long did you date before you got married? Uh, about a year and a half. year and a half. So you're just six months away from happiness. <laughs> uh, Ralph, can you please wish us a happy anniversary as David Bowie? Well, I don't see why not. You seem like a couple of nice kids. Um, Nancy is beautiful, funny, She's a wonderful mom to our two kids. She makes every day the best day of my life, Phil Wright. Uh, someone's getting a blowjob. <laughs> Phil and Nancy Lantis. Tell me you named one of your kids At. That would be awesome. What's your name? Atlantis. Oh. <laughs> Just getting that? Great swimmer. Kid's a great swimmer. Where were we? Oh, yeah, David Bowie for your 25th anniversary. What is this we could do? Happy 25th anniversary. 
Happy 25th anniversary. Happy anniversary, Lantises. Happy 25th anniversary. Happy anniversary, Nancy. Happy anniversary, Philip. We're so happy it's your 25th. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, Nancy. Happy anniversary, Philip. Happy anniversary, Lantises. Happy anniversary to you. You've been married so long now. I bet that this doesn't happen. Happy birthday to you, Nancy. Happy birthday to you, Phil. You just wiped your penis on me. I think I need a shower. I'm sure I need a shower. I need to be hosed down now and de-liced and disinfected. That was the remix. That was the long version. I was going to say, I'd already come and put it away, and yeah. you were still fucking singing. I didn't know what to do. That's always the problem, Kevin. You always finish before I do. I told you. It's been a and complaint. the post-chat is awkward as well. A long time. <laughs> We also get emails sent to us from literally all around the world. It's a segment we call the email bag. Ain't no drag. Garvin's got an email bag. Featuring Kevin's reactions. Gabe from San Diego writes, A few shows ago, Ralph did the McDonald's Fry Girl doing the Christian Bale rant. <laughs> Stop it. You know she's not real, right? You don't have to feel sorry for her. Uh, I was wondering if Yule Hauser could do the Christian Bale rant. Thanks for the free funny. See you at Comic-Con, Gabe in San Diego. I was thinking about that when I read Gail's e Gabe's email, and I was thinking, um, Yule Hauser is Christian Bale. He's, in he's incapable of being mean. Right. So how can he do Christian Bale's rant? He's got to do it as a nice guy. So, here we go. Oh, I thought you meant because he's not alive anymore. <laughs> well, there's that too. <laughs> yeah. Do Christian Bale! Do it! <laughs> Yule Hauser, uh, a different take in Christian Bale's uh, angry rant. Oh, good for you! <laughs> Do I come to your place of work and go la di da di da di da? No. 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 You're a really nice guy. You're amazing. But we're done professionally. You just can't be angry. It's going to be... Uh, well, thank you, Whiskey Fairy. Does this motherfucker have a weed fairy? <laughs> <laughs> People are raising their hands in the audience. Oh, I got it covered. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get busted tonight. It's the first <laughs> night we're actually going to have the police show just up. Just a prop. Just, 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 just stage weed. <laughs> uh, Justin from Boise, Idaho writes, I hope my wife gets herpes. Oh, what the fuck? We were on a roll, man. Love, love, hate. Well, here's the cautionary tale to those of you who are just getting married or who have been married for 25 years. I'm not some sadist who gets off on having an itchy crotch. Let me elaborate. A few days before Valentine's Day, my wife didn't come home after work. I tried to get a hold of her for two days, but I couldn't. Hold on. This is really sad. Man. Yeah. Do we have any sad Hulk music, James? I think it might be easier if Casey Kasem tells this story. <laughs> A few days before Valentine's Day, my wife didn't come home after work. I tried, but for two days, I couldn't get a hold of her. Finally, we talked. The long and short of it is, on Valentine's Day, she pulled up to our house with a U-Haul and announced she was leaving me. Now, I don't want her to die of HIV or anything, because I do still love her. And not crabs, because I don't want the solution to be a shave. 
and a sexy option for the next guy. Yes, there's another guy. So I was hoping Ed Wynn could wish my wife Jenny a nice case of a non-life-threatening venereal disease. Justin from Boise, Idaho. They grow them cruel in Boise. Well, it's his last resort is to have Ed Wynn curse out his wife. That's, uh, that's even worse than herpes, I think. Yeah. Oh my goodness, Jenny! What a horrible thing you did to this guy, Justin! So here's what's going to happen. You ought to get, get drunk and be at a bar at 2 o'clock in the morning and have sex with a stranger. And the next morning, oh my goodness, blisters! <laughs> but don't worry, Valtrex. It's for the living. <laughs> there you go. That's the best I could do, Justin. Jeremy from Melbourne, Australia writes, uh, you offended a lot of Australians and New Zealanders last week. He's referring to, referring to my didgeridoo <laughs> lightsaber. <laughs> to your diplomatic immunity over there, fuck them! I don't know, they're, they're our allies, sir. <laughs> but that is such an American sentiment. <laughs> Someone overseas pissed off, fuck them! <laughs> well, we were talking about didgeridoo lightsabers last yeah, week, remember? You did, I, yeah. Oh, oh me, oh yeah, yeah sure, yeah, yeah. now you fucking throw me to the Don't wolves. take me into your New Zealand Thanks. hell. Thanks, partner. <laughs> Um, you may be able to reclaim some diplomatic immunity with us mm. if you can have Arnold Schwarzenegger do his best impression of having an Australian accent since last week he had an Italian accent. <laughs> Melbourne. Like uh, Jeremy from Melbourne writes, so last week we had Arnold try to do an Italian accent. This week he'd like uh, Mr. Schwarzenegger to do an Australian, not Austrian, accent. Here we go. Ah, uh, uh, Foster's it's Australian for beer, mate. <laughs> Ah, throw another shrimp on the barbie. Yeah. That's not a knife. This is a knife. <laughs> ah. Crikey. <laughs> that manta ray just pierced my chest. To tsunami. You had him and you lost him. <laughs> what, one step too far. Oh. Do I get any parting gifts? Yeah. Ah. All right. And uh, this email comes from Burnt Lamb. He goes by the name Burnt Lamb. Sounds like some sort of sacrifice to it, to Satan. Burnt Lamb. I thought you said Burt Lamb. <laughs> That'd be a cool name. Yeah, he sounds like a game show host. But <laughs> and Burnt now, Lamb. here's your host, Burt <laughs> Lamb. <Bye. laughs> Burt writes, uh, I believe Lindsay Lohan, Lindsay Lohan, <laughs> is officially scraping the bottom of the barrel if she gave her merchandising rights to this company. Apparently, there's a new sex doll available on the market, so yeah. Burt Lamb sent us in a photo. I don't know. I guess he was in a sex store. It's called the Lindsay Blowhan doll. She has three blowholes. And the advertising says she'll steal your heart and your stash. <laughs> Electronic ankle bracelet not included. So we're gonna have to get one of those. Why? So she can co-host. <laughs> Now, with him, with him, I'm not going to replace him or anything. Oh. With all three of us, together. Really? Yeah. What would she bring to the show? She'd be airtight. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, lastly, this email comes from Ali Newcomb in Knoxville, Tennessee. You were talking about Anchorman 2 last week, and you slipped in a little bit of the legendary newsman Tom Brokaw. I was thinking I would feel very safe with him protecting Sector 2814. Can the Guardians please give him a Green Lantern's ring and have him say the oath... This is a section we call Ralph's Green Lantern's Oath. In brightest day, in blackest night, Ralph's impressions shine most bright. The oath will make the crowd go mental. If it's not fucked up by Ryan Reynolds, Ralph's Green Lantern Oath. So Ali Newcomb is asking for Tom Brokaw, legendary NBC news anchor for many, many years, uh, to do the Green Lantern's Oath. In brightest day, <laughs> or... 
fuck is that? No evil shall escape my sight. Well, I know to worship evil night, but where am I from? Tom Brokaw. There you go, Allie. Your Tom Brokaw is to basically just swallow your tongue. Yes, yeah, basically, yes. I was watching. You no were, L's. The guy can't do L's. For is that reason. it? Just yeah. lose him? Yeah. He seemed to lose the other 25 <laughs> letters as well by the end. It's always a bitch when you talk about Libya. He always had a hard time. I just remember that. Tonight, Boa got out here in the... Libya, that part. <laughs> Libya just would go away. Every week we say goodbye to some people in show business who left us with a body of work, and we'd like to thank them now that they've passed on to the other side, a segment we respectfully call the Tinseltown Stiffs. And now another edition of Tinseltown Stiffs. They will be missed. They will indeed. It's always uh, extra sad when a performer dies on the set. And that's what happened this week to Shark, who was doing a Kmart commercial in Van Nuys when he went belly up in a pool. A real shark? A real shark. What's the story? He was uh, shipped from New York to Los Angeles, as if that wasn't shocking enough for the poor animal. Yeah. They put him in an above-ground pool in a neighborhood in Van Nuys for a commercial for Kmart. Oh. Here's, uh, here's the last picture we have of Shark. There he is. Yeah. That's a pretty big fucking shark. Yeah. Um, trainers on site tried to give him oxygen, which may have been a mistake because he fucking breathes water. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do? I don't know. Give him some oxygen? That's what we do for people. Uh, they shot him with adrenaline, but sadly, uh, he did not get any better. They had to take him to a specialist in Long Beach, and later that afternoon, he passed away. Oh, man. Shark was four. He, shark, will, he will be missed. He will be missed. Big bucket of chum. Yes. Um, shark, uh, shark, sharks live to be like a fucking hundred years old. Yeah. So four is tragically young. In the yeah, shark. I made that up. I have no idea how old he was. Oh. Yeah. He's a fucking shark. Still, could you yeah. imagine, like, you're king of the seas and shit. Nothing fucks with you except maybe a fucking killer whale or something like right. that. Somebody snaps you up. You wind up fucking dying for Kmart. Yeah. <laughs> There goes our Kmart advertising. <laughs> <laughs> we love Kmart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Except when they kill fucking sharks. No, <laughs> no blue, blue light, light special, special indeed, sir, yes. <laughs> uh, also passed away this week, a uh, legendary drummer for Iron Maiden, Clive Burr, passed wow. away. Well, yes to, to, yes to Clive? Clive not, yes. To, not to death, not right? To You're not death. cheering death. <laughs> I was going to say, boy, they hated that motherfucker. <laughs> Finally, that fucker guy, he died. <laughs> He was the Hitler of Iron Maiden. He left us after three fucking albums, dude. <laughs> fucking bullshit. He, anyway. Maiden! Anyway. <laughs> the beast! The beast, dude! Dude died. Oh, sorry. <laughs> he joined Maiden in 1997, played on their first three studio albums, Iron Maiden, the first in 1980, Killers in 81, and then The Number of the Beast, which was kind of their breakthrough album. Uh, great drummer, by the way. Enormous drummer. Sadly, he was stricken with MS later in life, and oh. um, he couldn't he couldn't hold his sticks any longer. He couldn't perform any longer, which was just a nightmare for him, as you can oh. imagine. Iron Maiden did the right thing. They helped defray all of his medical costs by having a series of uh, concerts. concerts. They used to call it Clive Aid, which is oh, cute. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. yeah. And uh, they started a trust fund performing various charity concerts and having various events to try to raise money to offset his medical expenses. So they took care of their own, which is nice. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with Iron Maiden's work, or even more especially for those of you who are, here is the, uh, the breakthrough song, Run to the Hills, that you can hear Clive drumming on. Just a little taste of Iron Maiden. drumming his ass off in that song. That's a huge bucket of wind, man. He's going to be missed. You know, you do yourself a favor now. You watch the Iron Maiden videos from the day, and you say, oh, it's fucking Spinal Tap. It's amazing. <laughs> they, they look like them. <laughs> the, the vibe is... That song, Run to the Hills, is about the American Indians being abused by white people and right. everything. And it's just, it just it smacks a little bit of, uh, of Stonehenge or one of those kind of songs, <laughs> really. It's very entertaining. And lastly, this week... Uh, Malachi Throne passed away. You may not know his name, but he was a great character actor from the 60s. 
he um, was on a TV series with Robert Wagner called It Takes a Thief, which I remember as a kid. I don't know if they rerun it anymore, but that was a great show. Robert Wagner played a jewel thief, like a cool Cary Grant kind of dude. That was where he broke out, right? Yeah, that show. exactly. And uh, Malachi Throne played his boss. He made him steal for the government. He took him out of prison in order to make him go off and steal for the U.S. Uh, Secret yeah. Service. Uh, he was also on Star Trek, the original series, played Commodore Jose Mendez, you may remember from Menagerie, parts one and two. He was great on that. You know, originally he was offered the role of Dr. McCoy on Star Trek. Bones. Bones, but Ooh. he passed. He Why? said, I'll, I'll do Spock, but I won't do Bones. Which is how I always felt, really, about all of them. Because <laughs> uh, he said he didn't want to be the third banana. He wanted to be the second banana or nothing. So he passed on that. But they brought him back this for a couple This is getting so sexy. You're like, I'll do Spock, I'll do Bones with a third banana. No, you're missing the point. But the reason I loved him so much was he made a, uh, a guest appearance on the TV series Batman where he played a villain known as False Face. He played False Face on that show. Like in one episode? Uh, it was a two-parter. Yeah, he played it in two episodes. But he played uh, False Face, the villain who was the master of disguise. Right. But Batman and Robin would always see through his disguise for some reason because, you know, they're Batman and Robin. So I brought in a little taste of the episode, uh, uh, True or False Face, where he first appears. Here's Adam West and Burt Ward as Batman and Robin confronting Malachi Throne as False Face. <laughs> Now we've come to prevent a withdrawal. Why false face? What? False face? Notorious criminal? Master of disguise? Then we better load the money in the truck before it's too late, old buddy. It's already too late. False face! What? Right. That's false face himself in disguised person. Well, yeah? What makes you so sure? It's obvious. Only a criminal would disguise himself as a licensed bonded guard. Yet callously park in front of a fire hydrant. <laughs> yeah, see? That's how they got him. Only a criminal would park in front of a fire hydrant. He is the Dark Knight detective. That's man. right. A little piece of trivia for you, you'll appreciate. Uh, Malachi Throne also narrated the original trailer for Star Wars in 1977. Wow, man. Oh, big bucket of win there. So, he will be missed. While we're talking about Batman and Adam West, it's uh, my honor to award him with this week's Hollywood Helper. Hollywood helper. Oh, oh, oh. Hollywood helper. Oh, oh, oh. Hollywood helper. Oh, oh, oh. Hollywood helper. Come on now. Hollywood helper. Hollywood helper. This week's Hollywood helper is Batman Adam West. Remember Zach, the kid who was um, who was battling cancer, and Christian Bale sent him a whole shitload of Batman stuff, and then called him up at the hospital. Well, not to be outdone, Adam West this week sent Zach a uh, bigger box of Batman stuff. <laughs> and better, better stuff. And it probably didn't have that stupid voice to it either. <laughs> That's right. Are you, are you feeling better? <laughs> I hope cancer leaves your body. Didn't do that. It's not, that kid doesn't want to hear that when he's in the hospital. That voice is scaring children. <laughs> What you want to hear is the, is the warm baritone of Adam West on the other end of the phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Adam called Zach in the hospital this week and was talking to him about Batman, and uh, Zach was thrilled to be talking to another Batman. He's a huge Batman fan. He had one question in particular for Adam West regarding the, the movie that Adam did, the 1966 Batman movie. Here's Zach talking to Adam West with his question. So how did that shark feel on your leg? And Adam goes, I still have the scar. <laughs> oh, oh no. Yeah, so it's nice of Adam to call in. He's a good guy, man. Every week we take a look at some famous movie stars who turn in perhaps less than great performances. But sometimes they go so far around being bad, they come back to exquisite. It's called exquisite acting. To be or not to be. That is the question. Welcome to the world of exquisite acting with Ralph Garman and Kevin Smith. <laughs> this week's exquisite acting comes from Jared Parrish in San Jose, California. Do you guys know Josh? No, no. Um, he said, last week, you guys featured Kevin Sorbo, TV's Hercules. Oh, <laughs> With the famous line of him being disappointed. Do we, can we have, a, we have a little taste of that from last week, James? 
James, can we little taste of that from last week? <laughs> I'm disappointed! <laughs> no, it's just, it's just a piece of audio. It's just a little piece of audio. Disappointed! There we go. Uh, Jared writes, I thought... Another great exquisite acting to follow the theme would be the great Gary Oldman from one of my favorite movies, The Fifth Element from 1997. <laughs> one good disappointed deserves another, writes Jared. So here is uh, Gary Oldman chewing the scenery a little bit from The Fifth Element. I am very disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> I think also, Sorbo's got him beat, though. Oh, yeah, so far. It's way more he's, passion. He's in, he's in front. <laughs> also, every week, we take a look at mistakes that happen in the movies. We always say that hundreds of pairs of eyes look at every TV show, every movie, before they reach the audience, and yet still stuff slips through. It's a segment we call Shit That Should Not Be. And therefore, shit we should not see. Here's some shit that should not be. This week's shit that should not be, it's the return of Logan's run. We had that uh, once before. Remember the guy whose ass was on fire during that one uh, fight? That was pretty spectacular. Uh, Paul writes in and says, at the end of Logan's run, as the crowd gathers around the old man. Do you remember the movie? Do you remember that they all die at the age of 30? They don't yes. die any longer. But they find one guy, Peter Ustinov, who's lived outside of their community, and he's an old, craggly man, and, and all the young people go up and start touching him, and they surround him at the end of the film because they can't believe someone could live past the age of 30. As they all gather around. God, you make me want to watch it, man. It's, it's pretty You're, cool. I love your dramatic retelling. Oh, thank you. Uh, as they all gather around, you see the old man waving to Logan. You see a lone hand from an extra in the crowd slowly creep up, says Paul. The moral of the story is don't hire geeks as extras. Here's the video, and if you miss it, I have got a picture of it afterwards. Here's the very end of Logan's run. Can we throw up the still of that, uh, of that fucking extra? <laughs> fucking Star Trek fans. I gotta fuck it up for everybody. That dude won the Wrong internet, Wrong fucking man. movie. But he won the internet back in 1976. There was no internet then. Still, he was a genius. He was just like, this is gonna find it. <laughs> Someday, this is gonna be on the internet. Live long and prosper, motherfuckers. Yeah. Show's been canceled for seven years, but I'm still fucking rocking this. This is, this is gonna a slip Vulcan, through. It's a Vulcan photo bombing, man. <laughs> it is. But this, you don't do that to another sci-fi franchise. You don't throw the Vulcan sign up there. It's inappropriate. <laughs> it's like a Star Trek movie. You don't see a guy with like a Yoda hand puppet sneaking it up over the, the you know the pod bay doors. But there's doors. no like Yoda gang sign that you could throw up, man. Unless you're doing like a Yoda shadow puppet or something <laughs> like that. Like this is easy. Like live long and prosper. You could sneak that in anywhere, man. Yeah. Even in bed, live long and prosper. <laughs> I think it's called the shocker, <laughs> or the spocker. I guess that would be if you, <laughs> if you were to. Thank you so much. Fascinating. Yeah. Disappointed, I waited a week for it, but that's uh, what was right there. God bless you. <laughs> Disappointed! Uh, this is, I know Kevin doesn't like this segment, but it may be my personal favorite each and every week. When we take Kevin and you, the Hollywood Babylon listener, stick him in a place that's wildly inappropriate. I love to see where Kev is in. Hey, I just met you. No, no, no. <laughs> Uh, do we have the theme? We have the Kevin, the Kevin theme song? Do we have the Kevin theme song? We, we don't have it? All right, we'll just go without it. That's, uh, what is that all about? That, that's the, uh, the, third, the third element of the Kevin segment. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, Can't wait to get to that. Let's go to a couple pictures first. Uh, the Iron Man 3 trailer came out last week. It'll be the extension now. Awesome. Very exciting to see some prolonged images of the Mandarin. I think we were all surprised to find out who was playing the Mandarin when we first saw the trailer, weren't we? Yeah. <laughs> not they as intimidating. Me, not as intimidating as I thought he'd be. They but. called me a teacher. <laughs> That's fucking too fat to fight right there, man. <laughs> well, you got all the rings. You don't need to. You don't need ten, to, rings, ten rings. Ten totally. rings, yeah. Uh, I don't Eleven know. if you count the sphincter. I ain't filing that. That was genius. Yeah, that was pretty strong. 
Uh, Kevin also had a bad week in uh, the UK. I don't know if you saw that or not. He, uh, he, had a, he was late for a show. He had a bad birthday party. And then he tried to pick a fight with a paparazzo. I don't know if you saw that or not. That was, uh, that was a little embarrassing for Kevin. <laughs> Kevin storming out of the SUV, trying to approach him. Have you seen, you've seen the real picture, right, of course? Yes, yes. It looks like that dude is picking him up. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's either that's a very big dude or Justin is a dwarf. Totally. <laughs> and lastly, this segment usually is uh, just the photographs, but uh, Matt from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, sent in a little audio Kev in. He said, uh, credit to Black Jesus HD for the music stems and to whatever strain was smoking that night, but uh, Kevin, a couple episodes ago, a while back, went off on this Book of Mormon rant. Oh, yeah. He if saw the still, musical. If you've never and seen it, go see it. It's on the road now, spreading out across the United States. It's in the UK as well. If you haven't seen it, see it. It is the best piece of art ever produced by human beings ever. Go ahead. You're not overselling that in any No. Way, are you? I'm telling you, I've never met anybody who's been like, I heard you say it, and I saw it, and you're out of your mind. Everybody's like, it's better than you even said. Well, I'm saying like Sistine Chapel and stuff. I mean, there's other things that have been done. Sistine Chapel, you're paying a fucking ceiling. Good deal, <laughs> man. These motherfuckers came up with Don't Fuck the Baby. Yeah, that's Kevin's favorite song from that musical. So Matt from Harrisburg said sometimes he gets a, an, an itch to do a mashup, and he just can't rest until it's finished. So here is a mashup of Kevin singing from the Book of Mormon and uh, Carly Rae Jepsen singing her hit. Here's a little taste. Hey, I just met you And this is crazy But here's my number Don't fuck the baby <laughs> There you go. That's your audio, Kevin, for the night. My, uh, I got a 13-year-old kid, right? And she's all into, like, dark music and shit like that. She yeah. likes metal and whatnot. I played that in the car once, and she just looked at me so appalled. She reached over, and she shut it off, and she was like, no, Dad, no. I was like, that's bubbly and fun. She's like, no, Dad, no. So I can't listen to it around my kid, but when I'm in my office and shit, nobody's around, I'm like, I just met you. <laughs> this is crazy. That's a great pop song. It's a it's fuck, isn't it? I'm, I'm not nuts, right? It's a fun fucking it's song. It's like Jesse's Girl. I always get yes. people, people give me shit because I'm a huge Rick Springfield fan because yeah. those three-minute fucking well-crafted pop songs, when it's really done right, you just can't beat it. Gets in your skin, man. It's like fucking heroin. It's yeah, musical yeah, yeah, heroin. Yeah. You okay. know it's bad for you, but you're like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Just jamming it into your veins. I just snorted. I don't shoot it. Oh. You know what you're missing, man. Yeah, yeah, one day. Uh, let's take a look at the week's big stories in the entertainment world with the HBO headlines. Give me head, give me head, give me headlines. And give me head. Pum, pum, pum. Biggest story in entertainment this week had to be the amazing phenomenon that was the Veronica Mars Kickstarter campaign. Yeah. This caught everybody by surprise. Uh, Rob Thomas, creator of Veronica Mars, very popular TV series. Well, it wasn't very popular. It was, it was a cult, cult hit. I was on it. I know. I remember that. Yeah. 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 Um, it was on, the, I guess, uh, the WB, right, at first. And then it went to the CW. Uh, CW, once became... yeah, the CW show. So uh, they decided that for a long time the fans have been asking for a movie. They want to get the cast reunited and do a movie. And nobody would back it. Nobody's Warner interested. Just like, the show didn't really have ratings. I don't know if it really warrants doing a flick and whatnot. So uh, Rob Thomas and its star Kristen Bell get together and they say, let's throw it up on Kickstarter. And if we, it'll take 30 days. And if we can raise just the bare minimum of $2 million, mm -hmm. the production cost, then we'll make the, the movie. So they throw it up uh, at 7.30 in the morning this week. And in four hours and 24 minutes, they had reached $1 million in donations. Yeah. Which everyone said was unheard of. It broke a record. No, nothing on Kickstarter had ever made that much money before. I, I thought Amanda Palmer did. She made a million bucks. In, in four money. hours? In, uh, not in that time. I think that's what they were talking million, about. Oh, in terms yeah. of... Speed, yeah, it was like yeah. in four, you know, four and a half hours, it was ridiculous to make that kind of money. It was the, the absolute wise movie. You have an audience that's motivated online. I can't tell you how many people have fucking hashtagged me over the years, like, Veronica Mars movie. Make it happen. Like, keep tweeting it and stuff. So the, uh, the audience is there. The, the fan base completely motivated. Once this springs out, and they kept this very quiet, Dan Etheridge, who's a friend of ours, and he uh, has done podcasts on uh, Smodco. He did Dan, the Dan and Marty show Nooner with Dan and Marty. He's a producer and always has been on Veronica Mars. 
So Dan was kind of uh, letting me know on the, the what was how long they were planning it. He said this goes back almost a year, nine months or something like that, and they were terrified that it would leak out. They wanted to keep it quiet because first one who did this, first one that went forward and said, I'm going to fucking finance the, a movie off the fan base and whatnot, was going to break some kind of record like that, particularly if you could motivate your fan base. So they said they kept it so fucking quiet, never leaked out once, and then boom, just Wednesday it happened. And they didn't expect they didn't expect this nearly what happened. They thought they'd get there over the course of thirty days. They're pretty confident they'd get there. But right. When it happened, the day it happened, it was amazing. Four and a half hours reached one million. By uh, eleven hours later, they had reached their goal of two million dollars, and they yeah. they gave themselves thirty days to do it. So as of uh, before we left to come here to do the show, I looked at the numbers. It's uh, three and a half million dollars so far. That's what they've got. That's huge. So they've and got two million dollars for the either. two million for the production, budgeted. and then uh, a million and a half, I guess, for blowing hookers. I guess for Rob. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Congratulations, good, good for you, Rob. Rob said about the event. He said, "We better make a good movie." <laughs> it's true. When you think the fans have put up the money, you know they, they, have... they got some say. I paid for this piece of shit. <laughs> All they have to do is make a, a flick as good as uh, the strongest episode, and, and I think they'll And be fine. show her tits. No. Yes. No. If I mind. put in like a hundred bucks to the Veronica Mars movie, I better see Veronica's mounds. I don't think you understand the spirit of that show. Oh, now. I understand the spirit of my penis. That's what I understand. <laughs> She's out of high school now. Fair game. Top off. No. Let's go. Come on, Veronica, put him on the glass. That's what we're all saying. Oh, no, man, she's smart. You look at her brain, motherfucker. Yeah, I'll look at her brain from the inside. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good from the inside. Where do you think the brain is? <laughs> Up that way. From where I am, due north. Uh, let's take a look at the celebrity sick bay. A lot of people not feeling well this week. Lil Wayne, rapper Lil Wayne was hospitalized yesterday. Oh, come on. Don't you love the scissor? No! Can I get a couple scissors up here for me and Kevin, please? What is scissor? The scissor, Kevin, is the uh, preferred drink of some particular rappers. It's uh, codeine cough syrup uh, mixed with Mountain Dew. We've talked about this. It's Throw in a couple Jolly Ranchers. You got yourself a cocktail right there. Light that shit up, it's a flaming mo. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Little Wayne is addicted to it, so say some sources. And uh, he went into the hospital for seizures on Tuesday to Cedar Sinai. They let him out when he stopped seizing. And then uh, they. God bless you. <laughs> they found him unconscious in his room days later and rushed him back to the hospital. And sources say it's because he keeps downing copious amounts of scissor. Which, by the way, Justin Bieber apparently likes as well. So, fingers crossed. <laughs> Can we send Justin a case? A complimentary keg of scissor? I just want to assure our Canadian friends, you are safe here. Just don't make music he doesn't like. Don't make shitty music, period. Uh, Ed Asner, beloved Ed Asner, Lou Grant. TV's Lou Grant yeah. was sick this week. He's doing a one-man show around the country about the president, FDR, and uh, he was God, on... You can't stop this dude. He's always working. He's though. 83 years old, still on stage doing a one-man show, and the, uh, they were watching from the wings, and apparently he started to sweat profusely and forget his lines, and he started to stumble. They could tell he wasn't well, so they rushed him to the hospital, but apparently he didn't... They, they, initially, they were afraid that it was a stroke or something, yeah, yeah. but apparently he was just exhausted and wasn't eating right, and he got a couple days rest, and he, he's, he's great. Uh, sources say, however, he still is on the scissor. So, <laughs> Mary, get me some scissor. Ted, where's my scissor? Was he also an up? Was he? He was the, he was the, the voice of the old man and up. up. What a great right. performance that great is. Great performance, huh? but the opening fucking five minutes of up, dude. Holy shit! I was crying like a bitch. It's as sad as the last ten minutes of fucking uh, of Schindler's List. Schindler's List. Yeah. Or Schindler's Toy Box, which is Toy Story Three. That's right. But it's fucking sad, man. Like, you see the couple together, and then all of a sudden they slowly age, and she falls, and yeah. ooh, tearjerker, man. But a lovely flick, and he does a killer fucking job in that flick. You know what got his wife in that movie? Scissor. Is that how he got yeah. her? Lady. I remember the dog at one point was like, scissor. Squirrel? Uh, Lady Gaga's recovering from her hip surgery. What? 
Really? What happened here? She got an infection in her hip, in her joint, and they had to operate to fix it. She had to cancel a bunch of tour dates and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I remember hearing that, but this is why? Yeah, so she's recovering now, but in a true Lady Gaga fashion, she is currently working her way uh, around the neighborhood in the world's most expensive wheelchair. Oh. Is yeah. it made of meat, Ralph? It isn't. That would be awesome if she yeah. was actually in a chair full of meat. I'd push her around, but the chair would get smaller and smaller. <laughs> this wheelchair is um, coated in 24 karat gold. Okay. Is there, a, is there another show going on here today? <laughs> just seemed like there was a, a, a murmur going through the crowd. Don't make him angry. You wouldn't like him when he's angry. Is, is there breaking news? Did we miss something? Was there an earthquake? Or, or are you just an asshole? Um, she's in the world's most expensive wheelchair. Now that you got the mustache, you're starting to come off like a 70s cop. <laughs> that was real Serpico and shit. You're like, shut your fucking mouth, asshole. You pick your feet in Poughkeepsie? <laughs> um, Ooh, uh. 24 karat gold wheelchair. Yes. That's what she's traveling around in for, I don't know, six months, how long she needs? 24 karat gold wheelchair. Of course, because it's that fucking Lady Gaga person who's like, look at me! So of course she's going to be in that wheelchair. Dude. But a regular wheelchair would work just as well. I know, but it's got to have a little bling to it. This is why the terrorists hate us. <laughs> because there's women who wear meat, and they're starving, and then they, they, you push around in a gold wheelchair, and they would have no legs, some of them. I don't know. I'm just saying. They're angry. Leave her alone, man. She's just born this way. Here's a picture of the 24 karat gold wheelchair, by the way. Yeah. Ooh, that's a nice ride. That's, it's, it's not as nice as my car. <laughs> I mean, my car's not as nice as that. I wish I had that. I put a rocket on the back. Uh, Sarah Jessica Parker, also sick. She's not doing well. Uh-oh. Hoof and mouth disease? She apparently, uh, all those years in heels on Sex and the City and all the stuff that she's always been doing, running around in heels and the stuff. The fuck out of here. She, her feet are deformed now. She, it's true, she can no longer wear high heels because the doctor, the foot doctor, and I'm not kidding, said, you have, your foot does things it shouldn't be able to do. That bone there, you've created that bone. It doesn't belong in a human foot. She, like, by, you know how they used to bind women's feet and shit? That's what she kind of did Shit's with her happening shoes. To her. Yeah, she's malformed her feet. Her, her feet have become hideous. Do we have a picture of one of her feet? Can we take a look? Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Oh my God, it's disgusting. God, it's horrible. <laughs> it's the ugliest foot I've ever seen. I was like, do they really have a picture of her foot? And no, they don't. It's not a good looking foot. <laughs> I could have put a hoof up there, but I'm <laughs> trying to mix things up. Um, fuck tape, Kim Kardashian is in the news this week. Uh, Kim has said publicly, I'll try anything that makes me look and feel youthful, she said. So this week, she went to a spa and got a vampire facial. No, it's, it's not going down on your lady when she's on her period, fellas. It's... Oh. I wanted to correct them before they went in the wrong direction. I may have just found my line. Ugh. Oh, did you, just, did you just make that up? Yes. Oh. Wow. Also known as the Rusty Taco. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Uh, the vampire facial, here's what they do. They take blood out of your arm, and then they spin it to remove all the platelets. So it's plasma. Kay. And then they take a needle, and they inject your own blood back into your face. Now, this is supposed to make your skin youthful and rejuvenate, basically. Here's a picture of Kim after she had the procedure. Holy fuck, who took that picture? Um, a close personal friend, I'm guessing. Of all the things Kim Kardashian's had on her face, I think this is the worst. <laughs> what else has been on her face right now? Reggie Bush. <laughs> 
Chris Humphreys. What, how does a picture like this get out? And she, she took ho- it and she posted it. She posted the picture yes. to be like, look at me, feel bad. Or yes. Why would you do that? Because it's going to be on one of her TV shows in an upcoming episode. I got you. She also said that it was very painful. Oh, my God, I'll, n- I'll never get a facelift if it feels like that, she said about having the needles put in her face. Well, childbirth should be a joy for you then, Kim. Look forward to it. <laughs> Um, while we're talking about the Kardashians, Kris Jenner, the uh, pimp of the Kardashian family, I'm sorry, the manager of the Kardashian family. Momager, dude. Momager. The momager. She has put together uh, the um, power couple for the next generation of Kardashians. Her daughter, Kylie, 15-year-old daughter, Kylie Jenner, she has been set up via Kris Jenner with uh, Jaden Smith, Will Smith's son, who's also 15 years old. The Karate Kid. The Karate Kid. Uh, Chris believes that if she can put those two together, they'll have a whole brand new uh, merchandising opportunity if they become a power couple. It's like Kanye and Kim, Jaden and Kylie. Why don't you sell your children into white slavery and just be done with it? Just sell them to some sort of chic somewhere and make a big killing and then go to Acapulco and relax. What kind of percentage do you think you'd pull as the momager? I mean, most managers take 15, but what is a momager who really kind of created this shit off of the back of her daughter's fuck tape? Like, she must pull (laughs) at least fucking 50%, right? I'm guessing it's the same, 15, but they also, remember, they they tithe 10% of everything to the church, which is the church of Kris Jenner. That's a church that she invented. They own a church. That she actually has her own church. Uh, the, the Church of the Relentless Cunt, I think it's called. <laughs> <laughs> Our Lady. Our Lady of the No Shame. <laughs> Holly Madison, speaking of reality stars, she was one of Hugh Hefner's girlfriends. She was on that uh, reality show, The Girls Next Door, remember? Oh, I thought you were talking about the snack cake. No, that's Dolly <laughs> Madison. That's a different thing. <laughs> Holly I was ready to go a whole, like, the Peanuts used to do commercials for those, Ralph. Mm, singers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Holly Madison had her first child that she knows of this week, and uh, <laughs> she's not bright. She could have had a couple, and they just fell out. You don't know. It's uh, her first child, and it's a daughter, and she's named her Rainbow Aurora. Oh, now, that may yeah. be, you may that's think that's a shitty name, but she is defending it this week very uh, aggressively, saying there are a lot of smug haters out there who bag on my choice of name. But I don't care what they think. I want my daughter to be proud of who she is and to learn to speak up and stand up for herself at an early age. So you give her a cruel name? Exactly. That teaches her character. I like it, though. Rainbow Roars, I think, kind of cute. Second choice was Hitler. Hitler Madison. <laughs> Now that would build she character. She opted not to. But Holly's right. I mean, if your kid's going to end up on the pole anyway, just cut to the chase and give her a stripper name so that by the time she's 18, she's good to go. She doesn't have to spend all that time thinking up one. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Rainbow to the stage. Yeah. Rainbow, stage one. Put your dollar bills out there, guys. She doesn't work for applause. It's Rainbow coming up to stage number one. Rainbow's available in the VIP room, fellas. Buying champagne for Rainbow. <laughs> Have you done that? I wish. <laughs> That's that my sounded, dream fucking that job. That sounded ready to go. You've been practicing. Uh, this yeah, well, I heard it in my ears all, my whole life. <laughs> just leaning over the fucking railing. Just. <laughs> hey, you know, I think we need to get a, uh, a theme song for Justin Bieber for this show because he's in the news every week. We're going to have to work on that. Uh, this week, of course, was a big week in Justin Bieber news. He, uh, he, he tried to beat up a photographer in the U.K., he had a show canceled for the first time ever in Portugal. They, for lack of ticket sales, they had to cancel one of his dates in Lisbon, Portugal. Yeah. It's starting to turn, man. It's starting, it's starting to turn. Uh, for those of you who didn't see the scuffle he got in on uh, last Friday with the photographer who's trying to beat him up, here's a picture of him, uh, his, his bouncer trying to put him back in, into the, the SUV. <laughs> Apparently Justin had missed his nap, so they had to make sure he got into his car seat safely. He looks like a puppet or a pillow baby of some sort. (laughs) Meanwhile, I never thought these two would cross paths, but uh, Lindsay Lohan is in the news. Lindsay Lohan, why don't you come to your senses? You were doing mass there for a minute. You look like the Pope with it. Omne son of madre, send me your money. 
That's what we'd say when we were altar boys. <laughs> and the father would go into, oh, my God, David, Dominus Pacum, make them spirit to oh. We'd sit there going, send me your money. <laughs> Fill up the basket. <laughs> Uh, Justin Bieber posted an insanely long rant on uh, Instagram this week defending himself against all the people who have been coming down on him in the press. He says that the reason they're slamming him is because I'm 19 and it must be scary to some people to think that this is just the beginning. (laughs) Boom. (laughs) That was like something out of a fucking cartoon, man. Somebody in the crowd, he's a prick! You're just jealous, man, because he's 19, and this is just the beginning, yo. You don't know. You don't know Jay. You don't know JB. Oh, Bieber, every saga has an ending. I'm sure Corey Feldman thought when he was 19. They're all, they're all just jealous, because I'm in license to drive, and I'm 19, yo. I'm going to be fucking huge. Now I'm selling my teeth on eBay. I don't know if he is or not, but he's... <laughs> you guys got to make a buck, right? I thought he had a story. I was like, get the fuck out of here. No, no. Uh, so at the end of this long rant, the reason Lindsay's name has come up, because it said, and those comparing me to Lindsay Lohan, look at her 2012 tax statements. Boom. Oh, so his, bill, his, his whole big thing is like, I make more money. I'm than rich. That means I'm better. Because uh. he's a prick, yes. <laughs> I think at this point we understand your feelings about Justin Bieber, ma'am. <laughs> Meanwhile, the, the female Bieber, if you will, Tate Off Switler was also in the news this week. She needs a theme song, dude. Yeah, yeah, she's, yeah. Uh, she shows up every week as well. There was a woman going into a dumpster behind an elementary school this week, and they found shitloads of Taylor Swift fan letters in there. They were all had been written to Taylor Swift, and someone had just dumped a shitload of fan mail in the dumpster. And this woman contacted the local news in Nashville and said, Taylor Swift fucking throws out fan letters. People are trying to contact her. She loves her fans so much they're throwing out her fan letters. Well, because she's a prick. Yeah, Mr. <laughs> Congratulations, you have a catchphrase now. Next week we'll be selling he's a prick t-shirts, she's a prick t-shirts. No, it's not just he's and she's, it's because he's a prick. Uh, so, naturally, her representative said, oh, there must have been some mistake. There, there, we, we would never do that. Taylor loves her fans. In fact, we're going to collect all those letters, and we're going to make sure that they are dealt with appropriately, they said in a statement. And then they burn them. Burn, burn, <laughs> burn, burn the witch! Burn, burn in, in hellfire. That's what they burned in. Um, even Jeopardy now hates Tate Off Swiffer. I don't know if you saw this or not. Thanks to listener uh, Matt Rowbottom. He sent in this uh, still store from his TV show. Uh, he was watching Jeopardy, and this question came up. 2009's Best Female Country Vocal went to her for White Horse, where she, shocker, goes off on an ex-boyfriend. <laughs> I'll take Townless Cunts for 500, Alex. <laughs> and the answer is... And well... Is it the Daily Double? <laughs> Speaking of talentless cunts, Chelsea Handler was in the news this week. Look, I, I'm, even I'm bored of my hatred for Chelsea Handler, but every once in a while she does something so fucking obnoxious that even I can't ignore it any longer. She was in Aspen, Colorado at a restaurant where she and her crew were getting shit-faced in the middle of the day, and there was a group of businessmen at the next table, about 60 years old, and witnesses tell the New York Post that she started to throw bread at the old man, <laughs> pelting them with biscuits and various forms of bread goods. Okay. That's fucking obnoxious. Well, what's the other part of the story? Maybe the she's old She's not guys. on spring break. She's not 18. She's 57 years old, for fuck's sake. <laughs> she should know better. What if the old guys were harassing him or saying some shit? Yeah, I'm sure those old men were really starting shit with... with <laughs> You know, you know, we're going to foreclose on your mortgage, you kids, you whippersnappers. Are well, they having fucking lunch and it's a wonderful life? I don't know, but it, she's bad. That's my point. I like her. I think she's got moxie. Burn the witch! <laughs> I hate spunk. That's what she's got. She's got spunk all over. <laughs> Do you remember the guy who got the Netflix tattoo? Loves Netflix so much he got tattooed? No. Yeah, he, uh, he loves his fucking downloads, this guy. 
Here's the poach picture he put online uh, this this month. If you make it up, Netflix the tattoo. Holy crap. He contacted the organization and said, I want to do a commercial for you. Look at me. I've got a Netflix tattoo. And uh, he wanted to make some money on it, apparently. And they said, we'll give you a year free downloads. <laughs> That's it? One That's year? what he got. Maybe he should have negotiated his deal before he got the fucking tattoo. Shot a little footage or something like that. This would be like me as a child getting ColecoVision tattooed on me. Like, shit just goes away That's sometimes. That's true. Man. And uh, every once in a while, we take a look at the upcoming movies, and we can just tell that one of them is going to fucking suck. Brockheimer, Schumacher, Michael Bay. They make movies that make you say, Oh my God, that's bullshit, what the fuck? They're movies that will suck. This week it was announced... I'm always delighted to not be on the list. Yeah, you know. Your movie, your movie hasn't uh, promised to suck. But this one does. Uh, Sony has announced they are adapting the 1970s sitcom Good Times and turning it into a major motion picture. Where is the demand for Good Times? I'll tell you what, Sony. Here, do this. Go to Kickstarter and open up the Good Times movie finance page and see if people donate $2 million to see fucking Dynamite. See if anybody wants to see that on the big screen. I love the theme song, though. I got real excited when you're like, Good Times movie? I was just like, ooh, the Good Times you theme can, song. You can listen to the theme song without there being a 90-minute movie behind it. I agree. There's no real reason I could see to make this flick unless there's somebody like that wants to do it in a big, bad way. Somebody very, very famous. Scott Rudin is the director. He's the one who bought the project. He's the producing producer. it. He's producing it, yeah. And uh, that sound you hear is Tyler Perry swinging from a, from a shower curtain rod <laughs> right now. <laughs> How did I not think of that, he said. That sounds like a horrible, black-centric movie. Why didn't I come up with that? Good times with Medea. Hallelujah, dynamite. JJ? You gotta call him up, give him a pep talk, and just be like, keep your head above water, man. <laughs> Making a wave if you can. Temporary layoff. Good times. Easy trades and rip off. Good times. Scratching and surviving. You really do love that song. I do, man. <laughs> when I was a kid, that was my anthem. I was like this little Because you were white a poor kid. black kid? Yes. <laughs> my parents would be the, like, why is he identified with this so much? John Amos would come into your house at the end of the night? <laughs> I'd be like, how did he know all that? <laughs> I used to tell my father, I was like, Dad, you should really threaten to hit me in order to raise me properly, because that's what they do on Good Times. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad we're taking that 70s black culture and bringing it to the current movie screen, where black fathers conveniently threaten to beat and whip their kids. Best episode of that show, and if they did this as the movie, I would totally fucking go. There was one episode where they had this neighbor lady who was older, Yeah. and there was a rumor going out throughout the building that she was eating dog food because oh. she had no money. She was on welfare and shit. Oh, no. So they invited... Don't fucking laugh. <laughs> it was kind of funny. So uh, so they invite her over to eat and she brings like a meatloaf. And the whole episode is everybody be, like finding a way to pass on the meatloaf because they think she made it with fucking dog food. See? But then at the end of the episode, she figures it out and she tells him, she's like, even though I have to eat dog food, you don't think I'd do that to my friends, right. do you? And she like left. It was really hard. That was a great fucking show, man. It, but I can't see them doing it as a feature, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it had a weekly feel to it in terms of like dealing with the issues and whatnot. I don't know how many issues you could put into a 90-minute movie that'll feel fresh and relevant. At the end of that story, though, it turns out the meatloaf was made of actual dog. It wasn't dog <laughs> food. She was a Korean neighbor, and so she... <laughs> They uh, do. I don't remember. Thank you. Thank you for the racist sound effects. <laughs> I can't get into enough trouble on my own. Good Lord, man. You want to come down here with one of those coolie hats and <laughs> pull at your eyes a little bit, James? Anything else you want to get to? All right, let's, let's, let's hurry up while we still... Hey, can I, w real quick, what, what is the category we were just on? Movies that will suck? Movies that will suck, yeah. I'll give a quick shout out to myself because I just tweeted before I came uh, here today, uh, this evening, to do the show. I will read you the tweet as soon as it loads up. It is loading. In the meantime, how are you, Ralph? Here we go. Um, on, page, on page 59 of Clerks 3. Wow. Uh, I said it might be the midway point. In love with it, but still able to edit too. Gonna revise and trim 
till it's only page 45. Uh, I've been writing since last week, and it's fuck. I'm having a blast, man, because it's like hanging out with old friends and whatnot, and then getting to move uh, the story forward and the stuff that I'm kind of layering in that people who like the movies we've done before, particularly the Clerks films, are going to love little Easter egg type shit because this is the one that closes everything up. Once I'm done making this movie, I'm not going to direct feature films anymore and stuff. Right. So I'm going to go out and don't do that. I'm going to do other shit. Don't worry about it. Trust me, um, I'm sadder than you are. <laughs> He's the only director that will hire me. But that's, that is why I brought it up because you're already there, man. What? Yeah, yeah, you're in there. I have lines and everything? Yes. You play, and, and true to form, you play, uh, in terms of on this show, of course, you're the man of uh, 90 voices. Um, in, the, in the flick, you're going to play multiple parts as well. Wow. Yeah. This is very exciting. I'll let you know as I keep going with it. Have all the key players signed off and agreed to this project? Nope. <laughs> Because I know that was uh, sort of a hurdle before, is that some, Jeff, of, them, yeah, in some fact, of the big players you were, weren't interested. You were talking about the Veronica Mars Kickstarter, and, and it was uh, a rather bittersweet. I'm so happy for them. I love Dan Etheridge. I'm glad they made the money they did, because I love Veronica Mars. I look forward to seeing it. But in November, we almost did that. We right, almost did the Clerks saying. 3 Kickstarter, and uh, you know that would have been fucking cool. We could have been first through the door and shit. We we're going to let the audience finance it. But then Jeff Anderson was like, uh, hold the roll, man. I didn't sign off on this. Because yeah. there's still some accounting to be done for Clerks 2 with the Weinstein Company. He wanted to make sure that got done. He's like, look, let them finish Clerks 2 before we even have a conversation about Clerks 3. So I had to pull the brake and, and kind of... Uh, but you're going on, on without his uh, sort of sign-off? Yeah, my philosophy is this. I was like, never mind just sitting there and telling him, it's going to be great, it's going to be great. It's like, it all begins with the script. So I, I told myself, just fucking sit down. If he reads it and he likes it, it might Absolutely. spur him on. So right? I'm, I'm like halfway through now. It'll, like I said, I'll probably trim it back and whatnot. But it's it, it's pretty strong. If, if it's content, he's not worried about content, but the content will... I think hook him alone. It's pretty cool. Or I could start working now on my Anderson impression. That's all <laughs> yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. Start putting it together, Just man. Saying, that's totally. All. No, he's going to do it. He's going to be awesome. Kevin and I are big geeks, so every week we also like to take a look at the geek news of the week. Ruff and Kevin, Ruff and Kevin, Ruff and Kevin. Geek news. This week's geek news, Mark Ruffalo has announced there will be no standalone Hulk movie. Why? Why? That's dumb. That's fucking dumb. They're, they're making a Good Times movie, but they're not making Hulk? Now, see, this is, this is, now you're on my side. I oh, like the I anger. Am. Let it go. Disappointed! Yes! Disappointed! <laughs> you, sir, have said it. What? This is absolute madness. Why? He said, lots of folks have been asking about the next Hulk movie, but the next time you'll see my Hulk will be Avengers 2. He, he's up for it. He wants to, but the powers that be won't give it a green light. I guess they're a little, a little shy because they've had a series of Hulk failures up Bullshit. to this point. Bullshit. After the Avengers, you could give a two-hour Hulk movie where all he does is sit there and take a shit, and people will <laughs> fucking tune. They'll tune in. They'll show up, man. That Hulk and Avengers is such a commercial for the next Hulk movie. It, it doesn't matter what the plot line will be, people will fucking go. Because they did them right for the first time. You're like, holy shit. Don't it's turn on sad Hulk sad music. Sad Hulk music. This is sad Hulk though, fuck. He said, I'm not giving up on another standalone Hulk, but it's not in the works right now with Marvel. Um, one never knows what the future will bring though. So he's trying to t take a positive take, but it sounds like it's not even on the drawing boards. So. Oh, change it, change it. Uh, they got Iron Man 3 coming up, then Captain America First Avenger, not First Avenger, uh, Winter Soldier, uh -huh. and then Thor 2 also. So they got a lot in the pipeline, but Hulk is not among them, apparently. You know, it is uh, right around the corner, however, we're talking about comic book movies, Kick-Ass 2. I don't know if you saw the trailer hit this week. I was a little concerned. I haven't seen the trailer yet. You haven't seen it yet? No, no, no. Did you read the books? Did you read the Kick-Ass no, 2, uh, the sequel? I knew Kick-Ass, but I didn't know the sequel. Uh, it was, I read it, and it was fucking brilliant. I said, I just hope that Vaughn adheres as closely. Mark, He's great. D did Vaughn do it? Yeah. And I said, I hope they adhere as closely to the, uh, the second set of books as they did to the first. And from what I've seen in the trailer, they absolutely do. Everybody's back. Uh, Chloe Moretz, of course. Uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson as Kick-Ass. Hit Girl, they're all back. Now, what scared me was the uh, casting of Jim Carrey as Colonel Stars and Stripes. It's like the, the Nick Cage stunt casting of the first one. But I think it pulls off. Here's just a little taste to introduce uh, Jim Carrey's character to Colonel Stars and Stripes. Here's a little taste of the new trailer for Kick-Ass 2. Game on, cocksuckers. You 
we're the good guys. We're the dead guys. Franz, we the... Ow! Jesus! <laughs> yeah, there's a dog on your balls. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's a dog on your balls. That little girl is so amazing she's in the first kick She's ridiculous. Ass. Yeah, she was tremendous. She keeps getting better. She's an amazing actress, and she's got so much charisma. Yeah. Yeah. Is she 18 yet? 16? Listen to this guy with the fucking countdown calendar. <laughs> so uh, is she 18? 16! 16, I know. There's 16 and 20, 27 days until she's 18. I was like, who's worse than you? And then he was like, me. That guy. <laughs> It's got the Jergens on there on the desk, a box of tissues, the countdown calendar, just staring at it. Uh, there's a woman named Heather Large in the news this week, in the geek news. Easy. What's just her like? name. What's just her like? name. She's a regular person. What does she look like, though? 39-year-old woman. Does she, is she large? I don't know if she's large or not. Because that would be fucking ironic. It would be. <laughs> But I'm thinking if her name's Heather Large, she probably takes extra care to try to be as thin as possible, probably I'm guessing. Right, no. But the thing is, she's pregnant. That's the story in the news, that she's pregnant, and she got her uh, ultrasound back just before she gave birth to the baby. And it ended up on the Internet because it turns out that she is giving birth to Emperor Palpatine from <laughs> Star Wars. Don't take my word for it. I brought in the ultrasound for you to take a look at. This is an actual ultrasound. <laughs> This has not been doctored. This is an actual ultrasound. Here's the guy. Here's her uterus. That's what's going on inside her. Now, the baby has been born since that photo. And by all accounts, it's a beautiful, perfectly normal baby. Now. <laughs> Next thing you know, man. Strike me down with your hatred. Uh, Heather's husband saw the ultrasound and said, No! <laughs> that was cute. Lucas said, I can fix that ultrasound later. Just put some CGI in there. It'll be fun. Uh, Heather is both amused and slightly disturbed that images of her uterus are making the rounds on the internet, she said this week. I can imagine so. Folks, each and every week we like to say goodbye with some facts about a certain gentleman's penis. He is a, he's a very talented Irish actor and legend has it, he has an enormous cock. So each and every week we ask the musical question, just how big is Liam Neeson's cock? You can go to NeesonCock.com to post your own facts about Liam's cock. We, uh, we appreciate it. These are all submitted by you, the listener, and we appreciate it. Um, this first, first one comes from Dave from Santa Clarita, California. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big, it takes a team of teamsters to deliver his condoms. Dave sent in photographic evidence of that fact. Here are some teamsters delivering one of his condoms. <laughs> And it's ribbed for her pleasure, which I think is, is nice. We appreciate that, Dave. Liam Neeson's cock is so big, it now consistently beats NBC in the ratings. <laughs> well, what network doesn't, really? It's not such a big deal. Telemundo cock. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big, it has outsourced its help desk to India. <laughs> Hello, Liam Neeson's cock. How can I help you? My no. name is Ken. Yes. <laughs> William Neeson's cock is so big. Oh, Marshall, Will, and Holly fell into his urethra <laughs> and now they're fighting the slee stacks. <laughs> that was a fucking show. I love that guy. Bro. Marshall, Will, Will, and Holly. <laughs> On a routine expedition Hit the greatest earthquake ever known High on the rapids Aboard their tiny raft ah. They plunge them down a valley deep below To the land, land of the lost, 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 lost. 
To the land of the lost, 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 lost. Liam Neeson's cock is so big. When Hercules tried to lift it, he was disappointed! <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. White smoke billing out of, billowing out of it means we have a new pope. <laughs> and he needs to get to a urologist, I would think. <laughs> I have no idea what this next one means, but it made me laugh so hard, I had to include it. Liam Neeson's cock is so big. It'll turn your chocolate starfish into a caramel octopus. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But I just imagine just like pieces of calamari everywhere and just like a milky caramel color. I just Caramel octopus gives me the impression there's a beak in there somewhere. <laughs> or tentacles, even worse. I'll take that. Liam Neeson's cock is so big. Joe Rogan firmly believes that only alien technology could have constructed it. <laughs> oh, he's one of those. And lastly, Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? An 89-year-old Japanese soldier recently crawled out of it and had to be told World War II was over. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of Hollywood, have you had a good time this evening? Thank you so much for a wonderful evening for us. You guys have been absolutely fantastic. Thanks for being here for us. Sell them the joint out. Come back again, please, man. But for now, that is Hollywood Babylon for this week. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Ralph Garman. Babble the fuck off. Good night, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Kevin Smith and Ralph Garman. Hollywood, Babylon, live at the Levitt's.